One of the most asked questions on my social media is, hey, how do I become a pro gamer like you? And while it's good to ask this question, there is no correct answer to it. All I can do is share my own journey and obstacles I had to overcome to get where I am now. It all started at an early stage for me. I used to play computer games since elementary school just as a hobby, just to escape the reality for a bit. It was really fun. I remember my first games being strategic games where you had to think about your actions, learn from your previous failed runs, and losing usually fired me up instead of made me sad or angry. Eventually, I found out about CS and even though I avoided shooters, all my friends were playing it, so I gave it a shot. Soon after, I realized I was getting better at much faster pace compared to them and had a lot of fun winning. This fun meant we wanted to attend local LAN tournaments when I was like 14. And it went great, we placed that last, but again, it was a fun experience. After two years of many local tournaments and eventually placing well in the tournaments, I was noticed by the best local team and was offered to play with them when CSGO was introduced. I admit this was a bit lucky because they noticed my skill just because they were sitting next to us at LAN event, but when I scope out, I was putting myself in position to get noticed for two years consistently attending tournaments. So the grind paid off. Being part of Neophyte, we had no salary. All I got was headset, keyboard, and spoiler, they really sucked, and cash to travel to events by train. But we still dominated the scene for a good two years, winning local lands, national championships, and occasionally showing up on HLTV match page. Then the breakthrough happened. The introduction of FPL in summer of 2015 meant a chance to play with other pro players on a daily basis. This was so new to me and my team. Thanks to my teammate Zero, we received an invite into FPL and immediately started competing for hundreds of dollars every month. Remember, we were still on salary team, so this was our main motivation factor. After first two months of good performances by me and mainly my teammate Oscar, he was offered a spot in Hellraisers. They were looking for two players and Oscar recommended me. I did a tryout and it was a success. Playing against the saving team on this round, so they'll probably hold it. <laughs> maybe not. <laughs> maybe Go. not. With two picks up the AK-47, it's all gonna be on Snacks. He's a player that could wow. cut, but Stiko with a four man. And bang, I was suddenly overwhelmed. Signing my first contract in esports while simultaneously getting accepted into my dream university in Slovakia, which I worked throughout my high school. I had to juggle between school and CS practice, tournaments, travels, boot camps, and it just became too much for me. So after a year, despite my love for economics and business, I left the school to focus just on CS. This was probably my biggest risk in my career and I'm glad it paid off. I did everything in my power for it to be a success and instead of waking up every morning at 6am to attend lecture, I woke up to study game instead. I was so focused on the game, analyzing, theory crafting and deathmatching to improve that I didn't have time for anything other than improving my skill. And again, grind paid off. We managed to climb the rankings and travel to many countries to compete. Not only we traveled, but we performed very well on many occasions. For example, winning Copenhagen Games in 2016 was unforgettable. Just to explain the contrast for me, I attended the same tournament one year earlier, in 2015 with Neophyte. We bombed out on last place with me thinking, God damn, these players are so much better than us. And a year later, I was lifting a trophy in the very same venue. We even got to play my first major at E-League, which was a huge achievement for me getting my own signature in-game. I was chasing major for years, often I was just game away from qualifying. At times I was thinking I was cursed and major is for truly best players and I'm just not one of them. Making it was easily one of the most motivating moments for me in my career and I was living off of this high for months. I was truly living a dream but the true peak of my career was still coming. After one and a half years in Hellraisers I received another offer. This one I couldn't refuse. Mouse sports. Reuniting with Oscar and immediately starting off strong with a win in Mykonos was a sign of what we were capable of. And the show wasn't stopping. Within 10 months we lifted 3 trophies at notable events, ESG Mykonos, V4 Future Festival 2018 and Star Series Season 4. We made deep runs in pretty much 90% of the tournaments we played. We attended a major that got me second sticker in the game and we made it all the way to quarterfinal losing to well playing phase. Despite our success and briefly peaking number 2 in the world, I was moved to bench, mainly due to my poor performance and stats while playing a lot of supportive roles. I understood the decision, accepted it, but also wanted another challenge immediately. This is where one of my most important three months of my career started, and I received a call from Cloud9. I become the last minute stand-in for Cloud9. To this day, probably the best and most professional organization I ever represented. It was wild to me that they were even interested. My stats were below average, but they heard good things about me from other pro players. How I behave on and off the server, how I communicate, how dedicated and hardworking I am. 
I was flattered, accepted the offer and moved to LA for 3 months. We didn't play that many tournaments nor place well in them, the roster issues kept appearing and many players left or joined during that period, but the mentality I brought was career defining for me. I no longer wanted to just support others, I wanted more responsibilities on the server, be supported instead, trying to be more selfish instead of constantly pleasing others to put them into comfort zone at my expense. I redefined my role, how I wanted to play and brought this back to Europe once we got eliminated from Major in London and I parted ways with Cloud9. Quick break, but if you're really liking this video, please, please consider subscribing as it really helps me grow the channel and it will make me improve future content for you as well. So that's about it. And now let's get back to the video. I understood that with new approach to the game, I had to climb my way back into tier one. So while still contracted to mouse sports, I was allowed to look for my new team. It took me literally one FPL game. I was playing with Michael Ella and after that FPL match, he asked me if I want to try playing a tournament with them. Nothing serious, just that they needed a player. I agreed and well, it clicked. We had fun, I felt good vibes and opportunity for me to grow in more playmaking positions. We were not signed to any organizations, so we played for 6 months without salary just grinding our way through tier 3 and tier 2 tournaments, trying to perform as best as we could. It went well and we received offer to represent Godsend. It very much reminded me the days in Hellraisers, playing loads of tier 2 tournaments and occasional lines to gather experience. It was a roller coaster of results, but I loved the process, the journey of us being destroyed to suddenly being competitive against tier 1 teams. This is one of the things I try to manifest throughout my career to enjoy the journey and progress. And I felt the improvements. Individual stats kept improving, individual skill kept improving, and I felt noticed. After a year with Godsend, I was in serious talks with Cloud9 again. This time they were trying to build infamous Colossus, and I was in deep talks with their GM, Henry G. Honestly, I know there were more players in line, but I decided to decline the offer and continue with my current team and signed the deal with FPX. I was put in a position which I do not want to go into details, but basically FPX were interested in us only if I was part of the team, so I could have sabotaged the whole deal. I was thinking for days what to do, but I was glad I stuck with my team as Cloud9 project flopped shortly after. I was really glad I didn't rush my decision here and took my time before committing to the project that sounded very appealing at first. During time in FPX, things were hectic. Pandemic didn't make the life any easier and whole circuit moved to online environment. After a year of mixed results and our constant search for stable IGL, people in FPX decided to pull a plug on their CSGO division and we were led to look out for a new team. Again, I was lucky enough to be interesting prospect due to my individual performances and work ethic. Couple of teams reached out to me and I was once again in a position where I could choose who to represent. The deal was done between me and Apex. Me and Apex started working really well. The new team was focused on taking things very seriously. There was a lot of structure both in game and out of the game. Our management was focusing on creating good, healthy and professional environment, giving us tools to improve our mental and performance. The problem were our results. We just couldn't get rolling and after one season we brought two new players, Shox and JL, as well as our coach, Kuban. I took the duties of IGL despite me never doing so, but the team felt like I could be a good leader. Long story short, it went terrible. I'm not going into details of it as it could be a whole separate video and you can let me know if you're interested in it, but we flopped every single tournament we attended including Rio Major Qualifier. Shox was let go less than two months after we signed him and I made it clear that IGL is just not for me. I wanted to go back into roles I felt comfortable with. After two months of trial period looking for a new IGL, we signed Kixon and oh boy, what a signing it was. Within four months of working with him, we managed to achieve our highlight of the careers for every single player on the roster. Qualifying to the RMR was already an ecstatic moment, but it was nothing compared to qualifying to actual major in Paris. And you know what happened there, joining the 24 team tournament as second lowest rated team, being huge underdog and despite everything finishing all the way in semifinals, losing to Vitality the winner of the whole major, 
in front of the packed Acre Arena, that was another dream come true. This whole experience made me realize that you'll never predict when you peak in your career. It's a never-ending cycle of ups and downs and you have to chase the best version of yourself no matter where you are. And here we are. I just packed eight years of my life into this video. For a couple of final takeaways is me being completely honest here. I cannot even count how many times I wanted to just give up thinking I was just not good enough. I cannot count how many times I felt doubts in my team, myself and my career choices. How many struggles I overcame despite having no guidance how to solve it. But at the same time, I made lifetime friendships traveled to places around the world and I grew as a person with every single setback I experienced. If you can't keep up with the lows, you will never enjoy the highs. Therefore, the main message is to cherish every single minute of the journey. If you wish to become the best in the world in anything, you need to fall in love with the process of getting the best, not with the idea of being the best. And while we are talking about becoming the best, try checking out this video where I talk about how to become the best version of yourself in CS, how to perform better, how to get into the zone. And see you there on that video. Bye bye. Thanks for watching.